Negentropy, War and Climate, How Our Modern World's First Genuine Chance at Stabilizing Climate While Avoiding World War III Has Become an Inevitability. I'm a climatologist, a kind of environmental physicist who has dedicated the past three decades to understanding Arctic and global climate. Since 1994, I've been working on the Greenland ice sheet, helping to install and maintain a network of sensor towers used for climate monitoring and to check satellites and models. Through studying the data, we obtain a thermodynamic process understanding what is really happening on the ice. The changing amounts of ice and snow of our world do tell a thermodynamic story that by now I'm sure you have heard. Rewinding to my former life in the US, teaching environmental science at the university level for nine years, I obtained a broad exposure to a long list of global environmental problems. These problems remain the rallying cry of the environmental movement that for the past 54 years since the first Earth Day in 1970 has not really succeeded in global environmental conservation. While I've been part of that environmentalist tradition during my professional career, it's only now that I've been able to neutralize the cognitive dissonance between the issues of war, money, and climate. And now I'm happy to share a profoundly world-changing view that has put me out of years of depression about the lack of genuine international cooperation and lack of effective solutions to environmental degradation. Now, consider war, how much energy war consumes, the gargantuan carbon emissions of building and maintaining armies, the carbon emissions of waging wars, alongside the destruction of capital, the human tragedies and environmental atrocities. You'll understand how ironic and seemingly too good to be true that in the following, it has become clear to me how our world's chance at stabilizing climate and avoiding World War III has become an inevitability. I've become hopeful about the future for the first time in my career as an environmental scientist. Today, we are confronted with an economic escape hatch that millions around the world are now gradually, then suddenly, finding and taking. Just as assets like gold are being demonetized, so too is war being demonetized. Along with the demonetization of war will come the spontaneous ordering of economic systems. We are in the early stages of the demonetization of war. Now, let me explain how a new discovery is automatically reducing environmental destruction and climate destabilization. The discovery I'm talking about is the hardest money the world has ever known. The impact of which will be as important and disruptive as the inception of the printing press. Let me be clear that you really have to understand what money is to understand where I am going. The journey of understanding the difference between hard money and easy money takes time. It takes work. I'm talking about a hard money economic system where money is not brought into existence by decree, but rather is obtained through hard work. The thermodynamic definition of work involves a transfer of energy from one system to another. Hard money is negentropic, that is, thermally secured by energy input. Under a negentropic system, human decisions will automatically tend to abide conservation of energy. This is because waste is uneconomical in a negentropic energy system. War is expensive and wasteful of energy and life. In a negentropic economic system, it becomes automatic to understand war to be uneconomical. 
we can understand environmental destruction to be entropic. Entropy is disorder. Natural systems self-organize toward order, negentropy. Now, I mentioned a discovery. The discovery I'm talking about has been taboo in climate and environmental circles because it was misunderstood. The truth is that the energy consumption of the Bitcoin network is wildly net positive for humanity. By demonetizing war and waste, Bitcoin is wildly net positive for the environment. The energy use in securing Bitcoin is, to put it simply, worth it. The fact is that it takes energy to create real money. Think about gold. Until World War I, gold had been the apex money for millennia. Why did gold become money? It had the fundamental properties of money. Gold was scarce, fungible, divisible, durable, verifiable, and portable. Any hard money is sourced from a great deal of energy. The embedded high energy of an asset secures its value. Little or no energy input, for example, the issuance of more and more money by central banks at the touch of some buttons, betrays true value. Central banks empowered by weak politicians have broken our money system. The fiat money printed by central banks lacks a physical connection with the real world. The physical connection, that negentropy, is energy. The flaws of gold, namely the difficulty to transport over large distances and in large quantities, and the difficulty to verify gold, these flaws of gold were fixed by Bitcoin's creators over decades of incremental innovations in computer science and cryptography. The cybernetic and cryptographic components of Bitcoin were assembled by the pseudonymous patron Satoshi Nakamoto 16 years ago. Today, Bitcoin is not only bringing financial services to the unbanked across the global south, not only is Bitcoin a means to resist tyranny and surveillance, the dozens of value propositions of Bitcoin listed below in the notes are already leading our world unavoidably toward a new era of sovereignty, truth, and peace. It is through this technology for peace that we find a new way through spontaneous order to achieve the much needed implicit accounting of the value of environment. Under the negentropic system of Bitcoin, genuine international attention to climate and environmental destabilization will occur spontaneously and automatically. Bitcoin adoption is currently happening faster than the adoption of the internet. Year 2024 is for Bitcoin what year 1998 was for internet adoption. So it's still early and Bitcoin will never be overpriced. Can Bitcoin be stopped? No. No military, no political movement, no one can stop this train. Today, the Bitcoin network is global, 24-7, and secured by the strongest computer system in history. As the civilized world now inexorably shifts back to a hard money standard, war and a lack of durable goods, all kinds of waste, become exposed as uneconomical and therefore undesirable. The result of negentropic money is antithetical to the paradigms that have spread from a system marked by easy money. Under this renaissance, the circumvention of the climate catastrophe begins. As the energy demands of our civilization increase on many fronts, energy production itself becomes increasingly crucial. Energy has been, is, and will continue to be a central organizing principle of our civilization. It stands, therefore, to reason that the energy required to draw carbon out of the atmosphere to achieve climate stabilization can emerge alongside growing energy systems of our future world. 
Anyway, for the foreseeable future, demonetizing war is an essential step toward environmental conservation. Much more to say on this topic, so stay tuned. And while this is not financial advice, you may want to get off zero Bitcoin yourself. And then as soon as you can, learn how to take self-custody of Bitcoin to store your assets, your time expressed as monetary energy off of an exchange using a trustworthy hardware wallet. Thanks for watching and have an ice day.